Hello, I'm Dr. Maurice Dupre, and in this section we're going to discuss calculating limits using the limit laws. Our basic objective here is to see how when we look at a limit problem involving a complex algebraic expression, we can use limit rules to break it down into simple pieces. The main theorem that allows us to break complex limit problems into simple ones is theorem 1, the limit laws. If L, M, C, and K are real numbers, and the limit as X approaches C of F of X equals capital L, and the limit as X approaches C of G of X equals capital M, then first the sum rule. The limit as x approaches c of the quantity f of x plus g of x is equal to l plus m. That means that if I have a sum of terms and I want to compute the limit of that sum of terms, I can break it up and do it term-wise. The difference rule says that the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus g of x would be l minus m. In other words, if I have a sum of terms with minus signs, I just again break it up and do each of the terms. The limit of the difference of two functions is the difference of their limits. The limit of the sum of the two functions is the sum of their limits. So in effect, we just compute limits term-wise. Next, we have the product rule. The limit as x approaches c of f of x times g of x is l times m. That is, it's the product of the individual limits. That means in each term, we can break the limit problem into looking at the limits of each of the factors. The limit of a product of, a, of two functions is the product of their limits. Now, let's take a special case of this. For instance, suppose g of x is the constant little k. Well, in that case, the limit as x approaches c of g of x will be little k. That is, capital M here would be little k. And this rule would say the limit as x approaches c of f of x times k equals L times k. Can you keep that in your head? Well, let's look at it. In other words, that's called the constant multiple rule. And what that says is the limit as x approaches c of a constant times f of x is simply a constant times the limit L of f of x. Now, for the quotient rule, when we see quotients, the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x is the quotient of the limits provided the limit of the denominator, capital M, is not equal to zero. That's a very important provision. And in fact, this provision is what makes many limits that we'll have to compute into interesting problems. Finally, we have the power rule. If R and S are integers with no common factor and S is not equal to zero, then the limit as X approaches C of F of X raised to the power R over S is simply capital L to the R over S. That is, provided L to the R over S is a real number. That is, notice if S is even, this is an even root, we'd be having to assume that L is positive. If the L is negative, but S were an odd root, in that case we can take odd roots of negative numbers. In any case, what this is saying is the limit of a rational power of a function is that power of the limit of the function, provided the latter is a real number. That is, it makes sense. The bottom line here is that in a complicated algebraic expression, to take the limit, we just take the limit of all the little pieces, and provided the end result makes sense, it works. The problem comes when sometimes you put in the limits of the pieces and something doesn't make sense, like you have a zero and a denominator, or you have an even root of a negative number. In that case, your rules have broken down, and you have to try to make some kind of algebraic manipulation to cancel something out, or go to a completely different route to find the limit, or possibly the limit doesn't exist. Well, now let's work a problem and see how these limit laws work for us. Here we have the limit as y approaches negative 5 of y squared divided by 5 minus y. 
So when I look at this expression, I see right off what I'm dealing with is a quotient of two expressions. And so consequently, I want to think of the quotient rule. It says I can take the limit of the quotients as the quotient of the limits. So we'll say the limit as y approaches negative 5 of y squared all divided by the limit as y approaches negative 5 of 5 minus y. Now, the limit, the quotient rule says that this is true provided the limit of the numerator exists, the limit of the denominator exists, and the denominator limit is not zero. So what about this denominator limit? Well, our difference rule tells us that the limit of this expression, 5 minus y, is the difference of the limits. Well, the limit of 5 is obviously 5, and the limit as y approaches negative 5 of negative y, what is that? The limit as y approaches negative 5 of negative y would be simply the negative of the limit as y approaches negative 5 of y. And of course, the limit as y approaches any specific number of y itself is just that specific number. So we have negative, the quantity negative 5, which is, of course, 5. I'm belaboring every little point here on how these limit rules apply in order to emphasize that they are doing all the work here. So consequently, what would be the limit as 5 minus y by the difference rule? 5 minus negative 5, that's 5 plus 5, or 10. In other words, our denominator limit is not 0, it's 10. Likewise, for our numerator, we have, in effect, a product or a power. We can apply either the product rule, this is negative 5 times negative 5, or we could apply the power rule, it's an even power, negative 5 squared is, again, negative 5 times negative 5. Either way, we see now we have negative 5 squared divided by 5 plus 5. Well, negative 5 squared, of course, is 25. 5 plus 5 is 10. And so we end up with 25 tenths, which, of course, we could cancel 5. But the point here is that our limit rules have allowed us, in effect, in the end, to get what would be the result of just coming over here to the original expression. And everywhere I see a y, I simply replace it by negative 5. So let's just come right back here and try that and see what we would get. Everywhere I see a y, I replace it with negative 5. I get negative 5 squared divided by 5 minus negative 5. And then we see that is exactly 25 tenths, which canceling 5, of course, is 5 halves. But see how simple it is, and that's because of our limit theorems telling us our limit laws. And finally, of course, keep in mind, if this had not made sense, then that would have told us that one of our limit laws didn't apply. In this case, what could have gone wrong? Well, we could have ended up with a zero in the denominator, and that would tell us that the quotient rule could not be applied. Then we'd have to go back and try another route to the limit. But basically, when you're working a limit, the limit laws tell you, in effect, the first thing to try is just take that limiting value substitute it for the variable everywhere, see if that works. If it does, in an algebraic expression, that will give the limit correctly. All right, now let's look at a problem where we use the limit laws to calculate a limit. And in this case, we'll see how we can deal with radicals using the power rule.